Hi everyone, this is Rob Roy and welcome to the Elliott Elite U.S. Market Update. Well, the markets this week pretty much moved exactly as we thought they would. Last week, you can see the uh, Elliott pattern here. Let me take that off for a second though and just do a quick refresher. Uh, and for those of you that uh, uh, may be new, uh, this week we had this big symmetrical triangle which indicates consolidation that occurred pretty much for uh, the balance of uh, 2018. And when you have one of these triangles, you're going to get some sort of a breakout. And there's different ways that the market can break out. We can break out and run. We can break out, test the breakout, or we can have a false breakout where we have uh, break one direction, but the big move ends up being in the opposite direction. So now when I add the Elliott tool on, you can see that we completed the wave five. And that's what a lot of you are used to with your uh, Elliott wave education is the five wave directional patterns, one, two, three, four, and five. What we've been highlighting over the last several months in these recordings. And for any of you that are new, I would encourage you to go back and look at the recordings, not just to uh, catch up on the correction patterns, but the fact that we've been, or Elliot, I should say, has been absolutely spot on with the market. And we've done some case studies, not going back Monday morning quarterback style. We've been doing case studies moving into the future, and everything has been uncanny with how much it's uh, it's been spot on with the market. Now the correction patterns that I'm referring to are flats, zigzags, and triangles. And Elliot was a huge proponent of the correctional patterns. Correctional patterns tend to follow a wave 5 uh, directional pattern or quite often they're within one of the waves of a five wave pattern, a wave within a wave or a pattern within a pattern, if you will. And one of the things that makes, <clears throat> excuse me, the Elliott Wave tool within Integrated Investor and Profit Source is it labels those. This is by far the best Elliott Wave tool that exists in the marketplace, in my opinion. I don't think there's anything even close. And those of you, again, that have been with us know that this is exactly what was forecast. We had this A move here in this flat pattern with the B and then we talked about the different ways that the market corrects and the Elliott Wave tool forecast that we were going to have our C wave come down and be the one that tests the breakout and then we move higher from there and that's exactly what happened and this week now the Elliott tool has labeled this breakout move as an A wave impulse now that A wave impulse could change. We could move into a zigzag, we could move into a five wave uh, directional pattern. We could still move into a flat, which I think is the least likely of the scenarios uh, due to the fact that we are in a breakout pattern from the triangle. And when I was traveling around doing seminars, the fact that the Elliott wave would relabel at times was confusing to people. and. They felt like, well, you know, if it relabels, uh, that's a negative. No, it's not a negative. It's a positive. The markets are dynamic. They're fluid. They're ever-changing. And if you're not able to adapt and change with the markets, you're not going to be very successful in your trading. And that's one of the beauties of Elliott Wave is the fact that it is quick to relabel uh, with any changes in the market. But the forecasting is, is amazing. So don't think that's a negative thing. Think that's a positive. So right now we're in the A wave breakout. We'll see where things go from here. We like to bring the SPY uh, on our charts, as you know, because we can add volume in and see what's going on with volume. And with this directional A wave breakout here, we would like to see confirming volume. And the volume has been moving up with that impulse move higher. For those of you that are new, this red line represents the 200-day moving average for volume. And you want to see volume coming in to support an impulse move. We had uh, a lot of lower volume here, which is also normal for the consolidation into the point of the triangle that occurred here. And then we have a bit of increasing volume. Now, we would like to see the volume get above average to fully support this impulse breakout. But this is kind of normal with how impulses move. Impulses start maybe on lower volume, and then everybody starts to say, oh, wow, the market's breaking out. We've got to jump in. We can't, we can't miss this. And then the volume kicks in. 
So some of the smart money has already been made, and if you had been following this, you'd be included in that smart money, uh, and then the rest of the people jump in afterwards. So we'll see how this A impulse plays out over the next couple of weeks. Looking at the VIX, as you know, we've had this trading range pattern uh, within between 10 and 15, literally for a couple years, 15 was resistance. And then we had the breakout of volatility that occurred in early February with the correction in the market. And the old adage, old support is new resistance, old resistance is new support. Uh, 15 had been resistance, we broke above that. And then for a number of months, 15 became support. And then in May, we've broken back down below that. So we're back within the trading range of 10 being support, 15 being resistance on the VIX. Now we did have this one day breakout here on the 29th of May and that's important to point out because it highlights the fact that when you have a breakout of a major moving average or any sort of a pattern you have to have two consecutive days to be a confirmed breakout a confirmation day uh, and a, uh, a second day uh, that shows uh, the fact that we are uh, within uh, uh, our stayed within the breakout pattern so Follow through day, confirmation day, that's what we need two days in a row. But note that the second day we broke back below 15, so there was no confirmation day, no follow through day, and we're back within the trading range. Looking at the dollar, we had talked about last week that we had this impulse wave three here, and at some point we would get a correction uh, within the dollar. But it's important to note, people also misunderstood when this four is here, people would think, well, that is telling us we are in the wave four. That's not what that means. That means that if we're in the wave four, that's the targeted price. But then when you look at this pattern, you would think, well, we are correcting here. However, let's use the Fibonacci retracement tool. Very important to utilize these tools within Elliott Wave. And again, the pluses of integrated investor and uh, private source. And boy, if you haven't renewed your data, and aren't using these, you are missing the boat and you've missed out of tons of profits uh, so far uh, this year and over the months when we've been highlighting these uh, um, technical moves. Note that the corrective move has just hit the 23.6% Fib retracement. Elliott himself did not count 236 as a retracement or a correction move. You have to hit all the way to the 38.2% level. To Elliott, 23.6 means the impulse is still in place, which means we're still in wave three. However, it does appear that maybe a correction is in place. It just doesn't become confirmed until we hit the 38.2% level and note where that is, right around where that wave four is forecast. That's why. So if we get down to the 38.2%, then we have a confirmed correction, likely the wave four, and then we would rebound and move higher in the US dollar. We've been following the dollar over the last several months because for a while uh, it wasn't uh, moving uh, as you would think with the fact that the US is in an interest rate raising environment. The Federal Reserve is raising rates. You look around Europe, there's forecasts that uh, they may stop their quantitative easing program. Doesn't mean they're going to move to raising rates, but they're about to stop their quantitative easing or lowering rates. And we also have a Fed meeting this week, which could uh, be interesting with the markets. There's some forecasts that maybe the Federal Reserve is reducing their balance sheet, which is taking liquidity out of the markets quicker than people thought. And maybe their uh, pattern of raising rates could end sooner than expected. And that would actually be a positive for the market. So we'll have to wait and see how that plays out as well. Looking at TNX, we talked about this last week as well. I wanted to... Uh, show you this again because it's amazing with what has occurred. We had the wave five target hit, so the Elliott wave uh, pattern, the five wave pattern was perfect. We came back, we talked about are we testing this wave four to see if this is good? And look what's happened this week. We've rebounded back to the upside. Also, pointing out again for those of you that may be new, this zigzag pattern that occurred within the wave five, there it is, right there. So there's the pattern within the pattern. You could have traded that in the larger pattern if you wanted to, and you just simply label that as A, B, and C. So 
So the fact that we have hit this five wave target, we've come down, we've tested the wave four, and now we'll see if we're gonna move up into what we were watching, if you go back and look again, the larger zigzag pattern that started back here at the 25 level. And if you remember, the target price for this larger zigzag is just under 32. And we've been talking about the fact that you have to look at what's most recent. The larger pattern, and the larger pattern was most definitely the wave five directional pattern. That satisfied itself. We came down, we tested the four, we're moving back to the upside, and now we'll see if interest rates are gonna go up and satisfy that larger zigzag pattern, which is what's expected, and we'll see if that plays out. But boy, this couldn't have been any more textbook from what has actually occurred. Again, showing you that things have been just so spot on uh, with forecasts over the last several months. Now, we introduced a couple weeks ago two new case studies to follow, and again, we're gonna watch them moving forward, not in the back. One was uh, UNP, Union Pacific. We still are in the wave three, moving to the upside there. No corrective move back to the wave four yet. So that pattern stays in place, and we expect to see that uh, at some point conclude the wave three, but uh, we'll follow that uh, and see how it works. And again, for those of you that are used to trading the five wave correctional patterns and may have been taught we don't trade the wave three, we trade the four to the five. When you learn how to trade the corrective patterns and you can clearly see the flat that exists over here, we can trade the wave three. There's no reason not to. So there's the flat, here's your connection, and these are the things that we will be focusing on and educating you on over the coming months. So that's ABC, there's the X connector within the wave three, all that stuff, just absolutely textbook, and we'll let the market tell us when the wave three is gonna end. We also have Express Scripts, and you can see that this one has relabeled from last week, and again, it's really important to note that a relabeling is a good thing. We had talked about this resistance here, and look what it's showing us. It's now showing us that we have an A impulse here, and then a B correction, and now it's telling us we're in the C, and if we break that level of resistance, we're in a zigzag pattern, and we've been watching for that which is the reason that this showed up in our searches. For those of you that may be new, I have searches that I've created with an integrated investor based on all these technicals that I'm sharing with you that look at uh, healthy stocks, those that are fundamentally sound. I'm not a huge guy with fundamentals. I'm much more of a technical trader, but if you can find good technical patterns on fundamentally sound stocks, especially when you're trading to the upside, that can't be anything but a good thing. And if we are able to break this little area of resistance, and boy, other than those couple of spikes, you can go back and see that that has been resistance for a while, then we could be off to the races here. So we have two bullish case studies on both Express Scripts and UNP, and over the past couple of weeks, they've been working fantastically well. So we'll see how things play out and see if we can keep our record going. So that wraps things up for this week. Obviously in the economic news we had the G Summit, the G7 Summit uh, over the weekend and not a whole lot came out of that other than the fact that uh, Canada kind of reneged on a, a bit of an agreement that had been behind the scenes and there was supposed to be this communique which joint is joint that everybody agrees to and Trump in the US said no nah, we're pulling out of that because Canada, after I left, has uh, said things that uh, weren't included in that, but nothing really of, of major news came out. And there's a lot of debate in the U.S. right now about the whole free trade thing and the tariffs that the U.S. is adding, and it's getting some bad publicity, but Trump actually came out and said, hey, if we want free trade, let's have free trade. No tariffs. Everybody take their tariffs off. And you know what the other countries did? They choked on themselves when he said that. The only one that came out and said, hey, we may look at that, was Angela Merkel in Germany. She said, you know, we'll take a look at that. Well, you know, other than cars, they're not a big exporter. But 
The, the fact that uh, he brought that out and said, you know, we're arguing over these tariffs, you're putting more tariffs on us. And it is true that a lot of exported goods from the U.S. have tariffs from other countries, but they don't want us to put tariffs on their stuff coming in. It is not level free trade. Think what you want of Trump, but he's actually right on this. However, his statement of let's just get away from all tariffs. Nobody have any tariffs. And uh, boy, yeah, that uh, um, that caused everybody to uh, kind of bite their tongues at the G Summit. They don't uh, they don't really want that. But let's see how that plays out. And then we have the big historic meeting with uh, Trump and uh, the North Korean leader Kim. We'll see if that uh, uh, brings any market moving news. Most people don't think it will. Uh, but it could uh, it could be a very positive thing for uh, global economic growth. We'll see how it plays out. Anyway, okay, again, that's it for this week. Hope you had a wonderful week, and we'll be back to talk to you again next week. Take care, everybody.